You ever wonder what a cheeseburger dumpling looks like? Probably not, but that's what we're going to make today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Louie, and today we're making dumplings three ways. Let's get started, shall we? So, we're going to break down the cooking to three parts. The filling, the wrapping, and the cooking. For the Japanese gyoza, combine 250 grams of pork mince, one clove of garlic, one knob of grated ginger, two spring onions finely chopped, a handful of cabbage, one teaspoon of soy sauce, sesame oil, and mirin with salt and pepper. Mix thoroughly. For the momos, combine 250 grams of chicken mince with one clove of garlic, one knob of grated ginger, a handful of coriander, half a red onion, one spring onion, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of turmeric, pinch of chili flakes, a teaspoon of neutral oil, mix to combine. For the cheeseburger filling, combine the 250 grams of beef mince with salt and pepper, two pickles, the other half of the onion finely chopped, and a teaspoon of neutral oil, and mix. Now onto the wrapping. As we're using store-bought ones, make sure to grab a cup of water. Place about a teaspoon of the filling into the center. Wet the outside lightly and using a thumb and forefinger, pleat the side closest to you until you get something that looks like this. Then repeat with the other fillings that you have. I've made about 10 of each kind. Place them on a plate that's covered in flour. I use corn flour as it makes the bottom nice and crispy. And for the cheeseburger filling, we added cheddar cheese in with the mince. And if you have any air holes on the edges like I do, make sure to close them up. Now onto the cooking. Heat a tablespoon of oil in a pan and place the dumplings in a circular fashion. Fry for a couple minutes then add a tablespoon of water. Place a lid on them so they steam the top. Once all the water has evaporated, take the lid off and let them fry for a couple more minutes. Add sesame oil at the end for the gyozas. Then they're ready to go. Glass. Let's try it. It's just as I as I remember it when I was younger. It's got that crispy base there, and you can really taste the garlic and ginger in that. What you're looking for is a crispy bottom and a soft top. Now let's try the chicken momos. Itadakimasu. The Nepali momos. They're filled with chicken mints. I tried to not get them crispy on the bottom because they're meant to be steamed. And this is the tomato chutney that goes with them. They've got a nice kick to them. Perhaps a bit too heavy on the coriander, I think. And the... Listen to that crispy exterior. Oh yeah. Right, these are the cheeseburger ones, so I'm not sure how they're gonna turn out. When you cook these type of dumplings, these pot they're called like pot stickers, you wanna hear the sound of this on the bottom, ready? If you hear that sound, you're doing great. But I'm digging to these cheeseburger dumplings, I guess. Let's try it. You do like mass. It's a strange combo, but it kind of works in a weird way. 
I mean, you can't really get medium rare in a dumpling. It does have all the essential flavors of, I guess, a burger. And you get the softness of like a bun from the dumpling, but very strange. I don't dislike it. The cheeseburger dumplings were a very interesting style. I probably would make them again just for, just for laughs, but I'd say the best one was probably the Momos. Because I just I have such fond memories of eating those in Nepal. Comment down below what what I should make next or what I should what food I should experiment with. I'll probably do a part two of these dumplings where I make where I try and experiment with other cuisines as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit please hit that like button. I still haven't got used to that. Um, yeah, please subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content and I'll see you soon.